Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear participants. Uh, welcome to this session of self improvement from the Quran series. Uh, we have begun this series uh, right at the start of Ramadan, and uh, the purpose is to connect ourselves with the Quran as much as possible. So we select various passages uh, every time in every session and uh, try to understand the message of each of these passages. The passage that we are going to study today is uh, a very, very well-known passage from Surah Hujrat. Uh, most of us have often gone through this passage. It speaks of our communal conduct. It speaks of our uh, social dealings and also how we should behave with one another uh, regarding our personal relationships. So just let me start off by uh, reading out these verses to you and also their translation. So these are verses 11 to 13 of the 49th surah, which is Surah Hujrat. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayran minhum. Wala nisa'un min nisa'in asa an yakunna khayran minhunna. Wala talmizu anfusakum. Wala tanawazu bil alqab. Bi'sal ismul fusuku ba'd al-iman. Wa man lam yatub fa'ulaika hum al-zalimun. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن إن بعد الظن اسم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعدكم بعدا أيحب أحدكم من يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتم واتقوا الله إن الله تواب الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وكبائل لتعارفوا in akramakum in the lahi atqakum in the laha alimun khabir. Believers, neither your men should make fun of other men. It may well be that they are better than them, nor should your women make fun of other women. It may well be that they are better than them. And neither defame your own people nor give bad names to one another. All these are wrong wrongdoings, and after faith, even the wrong, name of wrongdoing is evil. And those who do not repent, even after this warning, it is they who are unjust to their souls. So to start off with this first paragraph uh, and the first uh, verse also, something which is uh, very commonly uh, heard in our own gatherings when we make fun of people and we uh, I mean, not only mock at them, we uh, deride them, we think that they are inferior to us. So this is a, a very, very pertinent uh, advice given by the Quran. And so in some of the cases, the Quran actually uh, addresses both men and women separately. So this is a special exception in the Quran when men and women are highlighted separately. Otherwise, generally men are addressed and obviously women are subsumed under this address. But in cases and in issues where something very important is to be discussed, especially in our social dealings, the Quran highlights both men and women uh, in its address. So the same is the case uh, in this verse. As you can see, first men are said that they must not make uh, fun of other men. And then it is said that women should not make fun of other women. And in both cases, the reason which is stated is the same. And that is that you may, you may make fun of someone, but that particular person is better than you, is closer to God. He or she is someone who you might think uh, is, uh, I mean, worthy of being made fun of. But in fact, the Almighty is, is knows what is in the hearts of people. And he will, I mean, he is the judge of people. And when you judge people by their appearance, by their outward looks, uh, it's a very, very shallow judgment. But the Almighty knows from inside what a person is. He knows uh, what a person is actually in his own heart. So the, the thing is, is highlighted here is if you're making fun of a person, then you are making fun of that person because of some outward thing that you think of, uh, that you have, that has come to your notice. But it may well be that that person who you think is inferior to you or he has some shortcoming, but in his own heart, in his own inner self, it is that person who is closer to God, who is a better person. So remember, the lesson that we have to draw from, these, from this verse is that we just cannot judge people. We just don't have the in, uh, sufficient data to judge people. And if we do so, we would be crossing our limits. We would be, in fact, going into the domain of God. Only God is someone 
who can judge a person and therefore the day of judgment is something which is reserved for the almighty it is he who will make this judgment he will pass his give his verdict and finally uh, of course place people according to their, de to their deeds but we human beings in our own capacity in this own world we have not been given this prerogative we have not been given this right or authority to judge people because as i said this judgment would always fall short of the truth it can never be based on the truth because we have certain uh, apparent facts that we might think that are uh, uh, this the deciding factor whereas in the case of a person it is something uh, that has to do with a lot of factors which people don't even understand they don't even know so here particularly it is said that don't make fun of other people remember this is not only something which damages their self esteem it not it is not only something which is uh, i mean it it is below human dignity it is something which is really below human dignity but also it may well be the person that you are making fun of is uh, is much higher in character is much nobler in his or her deeds than you might think of so i think this is a very common evil uh, that we find in our gatherings in our whenever we get together uh, and gossip and uh, talk about things one of the things that is very prominent in our gatherings is making fun of either people who are present or even making fun of people who are not present in both cases the quran has said that believers this should not be the case and you have to be uh, on the guard and you must watch out on uh, regarding these things because this is uh, human conduct this is something which can make or break relations if you uh, if you are a person who is uh, carelessly uh, re passing remarks about other people this not only damages that person's self esteem but also it gives a bad uh, outlook and impression towards other people who might uh, just uh, accept whatever you have uh, uh, whatever remark you have given and uh, on the face of it uh, the person would be judged by other people on the basis of the data that you have passed on so this is a very very irresponsible behavior and we have to curb this tendency and especially people who cannot joke back and laugh back at us uh, they are especially those people with whom we should never uh, uh, joke or make fun of i mean in good faith at times you do indulge in mu amusement and entertainment but even in that case if that is something which is of the nature of amusement we must never amuse ourselves with people who cannot laugh back at us who cannot joke back at, at us for example who are people who are our uh, attendants or are in, are uh, are subservient to us in some administrative system so in this case even in good faith uh, that should not be done because they don't have the capacity or the power to talk or to to laugh back at you so the quran is uh, very adamant that la yaskhar qaumun min qaumin don't mock at other people don't deride other people and then it says wala talmizu anfusakum and wala tanabazu bil alqab so do not defame people do not bring them to 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 such as instance that you are trying to make them look inferior before other people's eyes and you're trying to taunt them and then of course something which is again uh, i'm sad to say is also very common in our in our gatherings is to call people by bad names uh, by we have this habit of making uh, i mean short names or pet names and derisive names and uh, often that name would reflect the appearance of that person the person might be tall he might be short he might be a little hefty he might have some other physical some physically prominent feature and we start addressing that person again by that feature which is of course something which is once again damaging uh, the self esteem of that person so both these things defaming other people and calling them by bad names this is again something that the quran has uh, clearly said that it must not be done and not only has it prohibited these things look the look at the style the very next part of this verse says bisal ismul fusuq ba'd al iman and all these things are bad or as it is but the, the thing which is said here is that you must also think that these are wrong doings after faith and even the name of wrong doing is evil so it is uh, as if we are saying that this is a wrong doing that we should not even think about it. we should not even take its name because the name of that wrong doing itself is something which is which really spells of evil so bisal ismul fusuq ba'd al iman and then it says wa mallam yatub 
and those who do not repent even this, which means that if they have been warned, they have been told that this is something uh, not a this is not a proper behavior. It's extremely unbecoming of people uh, to blame one another, uh, to defame one another, to uh, call one another by bad names, and to make fun of one another. So all, all these things they must be abstained from. And a person who does not give them up even after this warning, then the Quran says that they are the one, ones who, are, who have wronged their souls. They are the ones who have, are unjust to their souls. Why? Because the Quran says that this is something which is against your own uh, dignity. It is uh, against the the caliber and the dignity of human soul which has been created by the Almighty. This is you are wronging your own soul to indulge in these acts. And then it goes on. The verse, uh, the next verse says, "Ya lazina amanujta bu kasira min alwan." But believers refrain from too much conjecture. Uh, and it's not said that uh, do not uh, indulge in evil conjecture. What is said is do not indulge in too much conjecture. Because why? Why is it so? Ishta nibu kasira min alwan in na baada zan me ismun. This is because some conjectures are pure sins. And then it is said, "Wala ta jassasu." Don't spy on others. And then, that Do not indulge in backbiting. So three things which are again mentioned is that we should not indulge in too much conjecture because whenever we are indulging in conjecture, we don't know where we are crossing the limits and we enter into speculation in, in a way that we start basing facts. I mean, instead of start basing our acts on facts, we start basing, basing them on conjecture. So we must not speculate Speculate, and you must not indulge in too much conjecture. Sure. And then we must not spy on other people. Spying again is something. I mean, of course, the the spying here referred to is the spying which is done for evil purposes to find faults, to find a person's uh, shortcomings, and then trying to uh, to make them uh, known public. So it says, well, so don't personal. Uh, uh, circumstances of people in order to defame them, in order to bring, bring distribute to them. And then, that do not indulge in backbiting because this backbiting is something which is like eating the dead, the meat of your dead brother. I mean, no one would tolerate this. The Quran says, if you do this, this is something which will be, which is something that you just simply cannot put up with. So, backbiting is equated with eating the meat of your dead brother. And the Quran says, so indulging in backbiting, indulging in uh, uh, calling out names, or uh, and similarly in this particular case, if you are talking to one another and there is a person who is absent and then you start talking about uh, that person, even if what you're talking about him might, might be true, the Quran says, no, this should not be done because he's not there to defend himself or herself. So if you do this, it's just uh, imagine the abhorrence, imagine the uh, the nature of what you're doing by equating it to eating the dead meat of a, of uh, eating the meat of your dead brother. So gossiping and backbiting is is something which the Quran really proscribes. And finally, one of the most important lessons which are presented in the Quran is you can see in this verse 13, and that is Ya yuhanna sinna khalaqna kum min sakarim wa unsa wa jalna kum shubam wa kaba ila litaarafu. People, we have created you. From a single man and a single woman, and we have divided into divided you into families and tribes, so that you recognize one another. In reality, the most honored among you in the sight of God is the one who is the most pious. So, what the Almighty is telling us is: remember that as human beings, all of us are equal because we have been created by from a single parent. All of us are the progeny of Adam and Eve. So, therefore. We must not boast of any superiority amongst ourselves. All of us are from the same family. And not only this, we should feel for each other as if we feel for our family. So if someone is in distress, wherever he may be or she may be on the globe, it should really be disturbing for us because we, are, he or she is part of our family, the great human family. And the Quran says that if we have divided you into families and tribes and nations, it is only to recognize you, to give you that identity. Otherwise, remember, it is God who knows who is superior. And then the verdict which is delivered here is, in akramakum in the lahi atqaakum, the, the most honored in the eyes of God is the person who is the most pious. And here again, the message which is given is, 
that this piety is something which only God knows. No one of us can have any say or any uh, any verdict that we can pass regard this because this relates to a person's internal uh, uh, behavior and his or her internal personality. So remember, we as human beings, we are all equal to one another. We must not uh, in any case or in any situation, imagine ourselves to be superior to other people. Yes, the superiority could be there, but where? I mean, God says only I know who is superior and therefore let me decide and I, I shall decide. As far as you are concerned, you not boast of this superior, uh, superiority to one another. You have to be humble. You have to be down to earth. You have to be unassuming and you have to, to understand that as human beings, you are created by that one creator and therefore all of you are equal. So this brings us to an end to this passage that we have discussed. Uh, we can now start the question answer session. Thank you so much for an enlightening session again. For our first question today, we have Malaika. Malaika, please go ahead. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Dr. Shahzad. I have been thinking about the human emotion of envy and jealousy and mm -hmm. was wondering if you could shed some light on it through you know, the gaze of the Quran and it is a very nat a natural human emotion and also the power of astaghfar uh, and how can one lighten themselves so you see jealousy control. and envy these are these are things which uh, i mean they are uh, human humanly uh, i mean there is something very common to us human beings and they especially uh, they figure when we see people who are blessed with certain traits that we would wish uh, for our own selves, but of course, we don't find them in our own selves. Uh, I think one of the things that gets rid of jealousy is to always look at one's own skill set. You see, uh, jealousy is a feeling of, uh, it starts with the feeling of deprivation. It starts with the feeling that uh, I don't have certain things that I should have. And therefore, I start uh, envying other people and thinking that I wish that those people too don't, wouldn't have those things. So uh, one thing to counter this jealousy or jealous feelings is that uh, uh, we look at the skill set that God has given us. And each one of us has been given plenty. I mean, all of us have been uh, uh, blessed with so many qualities. There are so many traits. So directing our energy towards what we have, what the things that we can really make a difference in and we can contribute into society and in which the society and the people around us they acknowledge us that yes this person has has this trait and as such he or she is someone who can really make a difference if he or she uses this trait i think one of the things is to always pay attention to the skill set and the qualities and i mean it's not like self-praise it's not like you are trying to make yourself prominent it's just an antidote to jealousy uh, to shift your focus from what other people have to what you have actually so this will make you feel that that confidence in your own self. So remember, jealousy not only results from this feeling of deprivation, it also is a is like a feeling in which you think that you are worthless and uh, you you would like the other person the way he or she has been blessed to to I mean just give up, uh, give up those things and you start uh, possessing them. So the skill set all of us have is something that makes us feel proud of and we feel that yes i can also make a difference and i also may be envious in the eyes of others so to speak the second thing is uh, in this regard is that we have to understand the scheme of god as well so you see the almighty has given certain people certain things and he has deprived certain people of certain things it is his distribution so if he has made a person rich or he has given that person good looks or he has given him some him or her some other ability uh, so it's not a something which is a reward that he has given a person or that he should or, or she should boast of basically it's because of those that that trial that you're passing through and each one of us passing through so if you are lacking certain ability or certain trait which someone else is is given so remember this is not something which is that person's uh, own uh, uh, so to speak it's it's not is something that he has earned or something that he would have deserved. It's like a test from God, something which God has given that person as a trial and test. Because, uh, I mean, if you if someone has been given something by God, for example, if a person is intelligent by nature and he achieves a lot of success because of his intelligence. So remember, uh, one of the things is that that intelligence is, is God-given, is God-gifted. 
So there's nothing that person has done. Yes, he could have added to that by working hard, but that basic claim was given to that person by God. So the scheme of God has to be understood in the second place, that there are things which he gives and there are things that he deprives. And, and the purpose of giving and taking away things is to try and test people as a result. And if they are able to understand this, then they will feel comfortable that whatever they have been given uh, is the thing that they should concentrate on more and make the use, make them make the best out of those things that they have. They have. Uh, for this is how we have all been uh, created. I mean, someone is there who is better than us, whatever height a person might attain, there's still a person who is still better than that person. And similarly, uh, on the lower side as well. So I think it's just a question of looking at our own skill set and also understanding the scheme of God regarding providing these uh, these attributes to certain people and depriving others of them. Uh, Baran Nishur, you may go ahead now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa um, I had a question about um, the backbiting because, you know, when I'm with my group of friends, I'm I'm consciously trying not to backbite, but when does it become backbiting? Like if you only mention a person who is not even there and you talk about them, or if you mention something that happened between you and him or whatever, or if you, if you are intentionally trying to bad mouth this person. Uh, actually, you see, it all depends. Uh, if, if the purpose of, uh, of, discussing some person in absentia is other than belittling that person. So you see, the, the definition of backbiting is that you are discussing a person's uh, flaws in order to belittle him. So this is the complete definition of backbiting. However, if you're discussing that person, I mean, for some other reason, for example, you want to hire that person, maybe you're looking at that person uh, as a proposal for your daughter or your son or whatever, uh, so all these things, they, they, they are not meant to belittle that person. They are just meant to have an idea of that person's uh, character. So if you understand the uh, the definition of backbiting, I think it should not be a problem. So the, the definition is that you discuss a person's flaws in his absence for the purpose of belittling him, for the purpose of uh, making him or showing him to be an inferior person. Okay, and if I, I had one other question real quick, like you, you talked about uh, not uh, trying to feel superior about yourself uh, regarding others. Like if you walk, if you have only these thoughts, but you don't want to have these thoughts, like you, you've, uh, I don't know, it's like just a thought you have. You, don't, you do not express it and you feel bad about this thought. Is it then like still a piece in you that feels superior or is it... Uh, just shaitan whispering. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm afraid I don't fully understand your question. Could you clarify a little more? Yeah, so for, for example, if I walk down the street and I see someone and I feel ins inside, I have this thought of superiority and I feel I'm like, oh no, I don't want to feel this way. Astaghfirullah. Is that a thought mm -hmm. of the, sh is that a whisper of the shaitan or is that some piece in myself that feels superior? Like well, it, it, it could be either. So remember something which is uh, what we call uh, the suggestion for evil or uh, evil suggestions. They come both from Satan and they come from our own nafs, which is our soul as well. So it could be either. I mean, you cannot distinguish at times. So when you are, you think that you are superior to someone uh, other that you see while you're walking down the road or you're meeting someone, that suggestion which which is in your mind that makes you think that you are better than that other person, it could be either. I mean, it could be from Satan or it could be from your own nafs. So uh, it's, it's, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it might not matter because uh, wherever it is, wherever the origin is, you have to actually try to curb it. So it's not the whispering that you can uh, stop. What you can stop is that you don't uh, go further. Once you receive the whisper, you just snub it. You just push it aside. Uh, and regardless whether it's from Satan or from your own nafs, and you have to combat it and you must not act upon it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Naveed Irfan, you may have your question now. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I have a question. 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 I
So you see, at-tahiyat, lillahi, wassalawatu, wattayyibatu, these are all adjectives. And they all, they all uh, signify sending uh, blessings uh, to, to, uh, I mean, to God. So it's like presenting your salutations. If I use the word salutation, which would mean that my, oh, my, all my regard, all my uh, respect, all my prayers are for uh, are in the in in honoring the Almighty. So all these three words, they are they they basically compactly express your emotions of respect and regard, and like you, it's like you saluting the Almighty and you telling Him that uh, I thank you for all your favors and all that you have given me. So whatever I do for you, whether it's in the form of worship, which is like uh, uh, I'm praying at the moment, or whether it is all other acts uh, of righteousness, for example, spending in your cause, they are all for you. So it's like, I mean, it's like a guard of honor that you present to the Almighty in short. It's like presenting whatever you have before the Almighty by using these three compact words. Salawat means blessings. It means blessings. All my whatever my whatever are the blessing that I can send, whatever salutation that I can send. And Tayyabat means all those uh, righteous deeds that I can do, they are all for God. Thank you. Nashaba Vaseem, you may have your question now. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so my question is if some uh, someone share other person's bad behavior with you. So mm. is that okay to listen to other person? Uh, because sometimes the parents and the, some people are really hurt inside and they want to share their hurt. Uh, so, so, I mean, it d does depend uh, and if, if one, someone is just sharing his or her hurt. Uh, yes, at times uh, you as a person, because you think that that hurt cannot be conveyed to the person who is inflicting that hurt, uh, in order to lessen the burden of that uh, person, you maybe uh, listen to what he or she has to say to you. But I think in this case also, one thing that you can suggest to that person is what the Quran has uh, put forth uh, before us uh, as far as the character of uh, the Prophet Jacob is concerned. So when his son Joseph or Yusuf was taken away from him and he felt, felt extremely sad, uh, he said, Innama ashku basi wa huzni illallah, that, oh God, I present my grievances and my sorrows to you. And I just, uh, I, like a petition that I have given you, I, I, I just present my sorrows to you and I confide all my sorrows to you. So I think this is the, the, the right thing that if, if someone is discussing someone's be, uh, ill behavior before you, uh, maybe after listening it, uh, listening out to whatever he or she has to say, um, what advice you can give that person is that you talk to God, uh, present your grievances before him, because it is God who's going to provide solace to you. So remember, instead of venting emotions before other people or uh, before your own confidants, it is best to vent emotions before God and, and plead to him and, and ask him that, God, I have been suffering from this because of such and such a person's behavior. And my grievances and my sorrows are something which only you can solve. Only you can uh, set them right. So I just I'm just going to consign them to you. So I think this is the this is what I would suggest that uh, this is the, the best example, which is which is uh, presented in the Quran. That instead of venting emotions, present, presenting your grievances before other people, because the, you see, at the end of the day, that is going to be inconsequential. I mean, it's not going to affect that person. Uh, all that you would achieve by venting your emotions is that you would become light. I mean, you, you feel better. So I, the Quran tells us that in order to feel better and light, it's much more, uh, I mean, advisable to present your emotions to God. To, to ask him, to tell him, and to share with him. I mean, he already knows your, your problems. So you're just expressing them by your tongue. Mm -hmm. So like if I'm listening their things by, like, you know, just by listening. So can I get sin also? Like, because, I mean, uh, it all depends. It all depends of, on the nature of the thing that are being communicated. If the person who is communicating the, the ills of, the, of, of someone else, if the purpose is, again, as I said, it's like backbiting your... Uh, the per he, that person is trying to belittle uh, that person in his or her absence, then uh, obviously uh, you should tell that person. I mean, uh, at times it is difficult to tell that person right at the time at that time because he or she would be in an emotional state. But once you are able to listen to whatever he or she has to say, maybe later on you can tell that person that, well, the right way in, in expressing your emotions is this and this because when you talk about someone's uh, grievances in his or her absence, 
uh, then you know, uh, and, and on most occasions you cross that red, red line. So I think it's a question of, uh, of politely communicating your viewpoint later on once the incident has passed, because when the person is emotional, it's difficult to at the at the same at the uh, on the spot to correct that person. So just let it pass, and then later on communicate your viewpoint. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ruhi. You may have your question now. Uh, the passage that we are reading today, um, uh, the first line uh, tells us uh, a word uh, common and the translation for it is men, whereas in the same line, Anisa uh, is translated as women. So mm -hmm. don't you think that common is uh, uh, a word which should include men and women both? Uh, actually, uh, in, in, in normal circumstances, yes, you are absolutely right. But here, because women have been separately mentioned, so automatically, this is what we call tajreed in Arabic, that that part of the meaning of that Arabic word would be stripped from it because women have now been separately mentioned. So now the word kauman is now specifically referring to the group of men there. So had women not been mentioned uh, separately, then uh, you would have been absolutely right in saying so. But this is a very common principle. I mean, this is a very common uh, linguistic principle of Arabic that when something is mentioned in from a word, which is part of the, that word's meaning, then the translation of that word uh, will be done by stripping off the meaning which has been excluded. The remaining part would now be the meaning. So the word kaum in general would include men and women. But because men, now women have been mentioned separately. So now what remain are the men. And therefore now the word kaum would mean that men are being implied here. One more thing that when we are among our cousins and sisters, uh, we, we start laughing on very uh, small things sometimes, the funny things about somebody. Mm -hmm. And then right. it seems as if uh, some kind of a Satan has gripped us and we can't stop laughing and laughing. And although we know that uh, we are doing something wrong and we keep saying tobas takfar tobas takfar we are doing something very wrong but we mm. can't stop laughing at that moment what should how um, can we stop ourselves from such a such an activity uh, when, you see, especially uh, among our friends mm. and cousins so you see life is the name of self control and however i mean however much you have to muster the self control and uh, when you are not able to do so, absolutely right. What we people do is we say astaghfar, we say, God, please forgive us because we shouldn't have indulged in these things, but they are now beyond our control. So I think uh, this is an instance to start, to always uh, recoup and to always, uh, it's like a rejoinder that for future, you remind yourself that whenever such a situation arises, I will try to be more, I mean, I will control myself as much as possible. So you see, it's it's a battle that every one of us uh, has to fight in, a, in our own fronts. And the best way to fight this battle is to prepare ourselves beforehand. And that is done by telling yourself, it's like a self-suggestive behavior, that whenever such an instance would arise, I will not I will not laugh beyond a certain limit. I mean, laughing in good faith uh, at, uh, as a means to amuse ourselves is one thing, but crossing the limits is something uh, which is not right. So you have to prepare for that in advance. And this auto-suggestive behavior in which you keep talking to yourself and say that, well, in future, when this instance arises, I will not go beyond a certain limit. So this is what helps you. I mean, there's no other way, easy way out. You have to do it yourself. And once you do it uh, wrongly, make a commitment that you'll not repeat it again and uh, try to be more uh, uh, attentive to the fact that religion is the name of self-control. You see, it is this self-control which has to be exercised. And this is what makes a person dignified. And the more you aim for it, uh, the more you'll be able to come closer to it. Thank you so much, Dr. Shazad, again for our section lecture today.